In the microbial world, gene crossover events, also known as lateral or horizontal gene transfer, it's a pretty common occurrence. Single-celled microbes, such as bacteria and archaea, and even some fungi, can produce small genes or clusters of genes, package them in some kind of membrane or transport structure, and exchange them or give them to other microbes, who then integrate those genes into their own genome. It's an amazing process, with massive evolutionary and ecological implications, but it's virtually entirely restricted to microbes. Larger organisms can integrate foreign DNA from crossover events, but this is typically in the context of, like, a retrovirus inserting its DNA into the genome. Now, the news that I bring you here involves a new discovery. For the first time ever, Scientists have documented a gene crossover event in macroscopic organisms, where a gene from a plant was integrated into an insect. And this crossover event is having major ecological consequences. So let's dig into the abstract of the paper to establish some context and see what's going on. From the top of the abstract, the scientists write, quote, Plants protect themselves with a vast array of toxic secondary metabolites. Yet most plants serve as food for insects. The evolutionary processes that allow herbivorous insects to resist plant defenses remain largely unknown. The whitefly, Bamisia tabachi, is a cosmopolitan, highly polyphagous agricultural pest that vectors several serious plant pathogenic viruses and is an excellent model to probe the molecular mechanisms involved in overcoming plant defenses. Unquote. All right, so let's explain. First things first, they bring up the fact that plants use chemical defenses. So when leaf tissue or root tissue or something like that is being damaged by a grazing herbivore, the plant can release chemicals that makes its tissue taste bitter and unappetizing. They can secrete chemicals that attract wasps that'll come and prey upon the insect that's eating it and chewing on their leaves and hopefully scare it away. And they can also release hormones that tell other plants that danger is nearby so they can embitter their leaf tissue as well. One group of these defensive chemicals are the phenolic glycosides, which are toxic secondary metabolites that some plants use to discourage generalist herbivores. This detail will become important in just a moment. Now, the herbivorous insects have also evolved ways to resist these chemicals, so that they can, of course, keep eating the plant. But the authors of the paper say that little is known about how this happens mechanistically or genetically. They highlight a particular insect species, the white fly, Bamisia tabachi, as a good model to study insect resistance to plant defenses, as these white flies feed on many different plants and are exposed to many different defensive chemicals. Okay, so this is where it gets supremely interesting. If we continue reading the abstract, they say, quote, here we show that, through an exceptional horizontal gene transfer event, the whitefly has acquired the plant-derived phenolic glycoside melanyl transferase gene, BTPMAT1. This gene enables whiteflies to neutralize phenolic glycosides." Unquote. So when the whitefly eats a plant expressing these phenolic glycosides in an attempt to defend itself, to make the whitefly disgusted with the, the tissue and reject it as food and fly off and go eat something else, the whitefly is actually able to use this BTPMAT1 protein to neutralize those chemicals and keep on eating. The whitefly has evolved to use the plant's own defensive mechanism against it. To test this hypothesis and see if this is actually what's going on, the researchers genetically engineered some tomato plants to produce an RNA sequence that disables this BTPMAT1 gene. The effect is that when the white flies eat from these tomato plants, they'll ingest some of this uh, RNA, some of this altered RNA, and the RNA would disable the BTPMAT1 protein. The effect here is that the white flies would once again be negatively affected by the phenolic glycosides and they would reject the plants as food, and the plants would be able to protect themselves once again. Fascinatingly, this RNA method didn't have any effect on other insects, which would suggest that it's only the white flies who carry the plant gene and are thus affected by this RNA inhibitor. The authors suggest that this mechanism may be the key to developing insecticides 
that only target white flies, which are a notorious pest known for ruining several agricultural crops by transmitting viruses and depositing sticky residues onto the plants. The real question becomes, how did this happen? How did the white fly acquire this plant-generated gene? The scientists don't know for certain, but they speculate that a virus may have been involved, acting as the vehicle that transports the gene from one organism into the other. In any case, this gene crossover event between macroscopic organisms, between stuff as distantly related as a plant and a white fly, no less, is an extremely rare and amazing occurrence. Super fascinating stuff. Oh.